Greetings viewers, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at my 94 Subaru Sandbar and finding out everything that's wrong with it. We're gonna go front to back, find all the mechanical issues, find any uh, electronic issues, anything of that nature, anything that's damaged, broken, not working, and uh, compile a list of things we're gonna go through and address in repairing this thing and getting it back into tip top shape. With that said, let's go ahead and get into the inspection. All right guys, so full inspection is done. I'm gonna go over the front end first. Uh, very little wrong in the front end. Uh, our tie rod ends, inner and outer, both look really good. We don't have any play in them. There's a little bit of dry rot on the boot, but they haven't torn, they're not leaking yet. Uh, it looks like we've got two brand new brake hoses on the front end, and our brake pads are basically brand new as well. Nice and thick, lots of material left. Um, other than that, our struts are good, no leaks seen. Uh, the ball joints are good, no tears in the boots, no play. Checked them with the pry bar, everything's good, nice and strong. Uh, the front lower control arm, the rear bushings were a little bit squishy, but they didn't appear to be dry rotted or torn. And the front bushings were nice and firm, not a lot of slop in them. Uh, so nothing really to worry about on the front end. The only thing that was kind of concerning was the rust on the front cross member. It has rusted through right in front of where the center steering, um, not exactly sure what it's called. It's not a Pittman arm or an idler arm. It might be an idler arm. It's kind of a, it kind of holds both of the inner tie rods as a central pivot point for the rod that comes off of the steering column. Uh, a little bit different than traditional steering in an American vehicle or in uh, a Japanese vehicle uh, that is sold in America. A little bit different system just because of it being cab over and everything being crunched in there and it being manual steering, no power assist. Our uh, radiator, as you see, looks good. We don't see any messed up fins, any holes, no leaks detected. Uh, the only other thing we saw is the front differential. The di bushing above the front differential is a little bit torn and you can tell it's degrading. Uh, there is leakage from the front differential. We've got a axle seal leaking on the driver's side as you see here in the video. And we've got some gear oil leaking underneath. Now the owner that sold me the vehicle said they serviced the front differential. I'm still gonna serv service it myself. So I don't know if they didn't fully tighten the fill plug, didn't fully tighten the drain plug, didn't put a new crush washer on it, or if they just made a mess and spilled stuff and didn't bother to clean it up. But we do have gear oil underneath the front differential. Other than that, nothing really noteworthy to worry about. Uh, other than that, you know, as far as rust, there's not much rust to speak of other than that front cross member. Uh, but we can have that cut out and have a piece of sheet metal welded in to dress that and have no more concern there. Uh, we did have a little bit of rust on the two main coolant lines running to the engine. Uh, right now it's just surface rust. We might be able to just hit that with a wire brush and spray Rust-Oleum on it and not have to worry about it again. Uh, but other than that, nothing really of worry or concern in the front and everything really looked good. Uh, as far as on the body, the only thing we saw noteworthy was the rust there in the cab corners under the mud flaps that have already got some paint and uh, Rust-Oleum primer. Uh, we're going to buff that out with the wire wheel, take all that rust and crud down to bare metal, uh, cut that rust oleum on it, maybe some body filler if it's deeply pitted, and uh, paint that up, put our mud guards back on it, and not have to worry about that again. But other than that, that's really the only rust on the body. There's a little bit of surface rust under the bed in some areas, and in the cab corner underneath, um, on the back side where the bed mounts. But other than that, pretty good. The frame, nice and rust free, and uh, no other major issues. And from there, we're gonna go ahead and look at the back, go into the engine, the mechanicals, the transaxle, all that, all the good stuff you've been wanting to see and exactly you know how it's laid out with that rear engine design. And uh, we'll go to those clips now. All right, guys, now to the moment you've been waiting for. Opened up the hood, which is the back bumper on the sandbar. Um, had I <laughs> bothered to look at this before, there is actually an ID plate here, uh, similar to the stamped metal plate that used to be on the strut towers of older Subaru models and uh, has been replaced with the black sticker in the passenger uh, door jam. 
Uh, so here we see our engine is an EN07. Uh, the displacement is 658 cc's. Uh, they're capped at 660 on the K cars. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Don't have my tra Google Translate out. Let's see, 1990 emission control. Vehicle conforming to 1990 exhaust gas regulations, engine type EN07. Uh, let's see. Adjust valve. Okay, that's about valve adjust ignition timing, bottom. Uh, it keeps setting around. Set idle. Adjust valve when idle. This car is based on regulation safety standards for road going vehicles. It is suitable for two year exhaust emission regulation. Uh, Fuji heavy industry. So I kept trying to keep up with the translations, but basically got what we wanted out of that. Uh, so we have our little Subaru Clover 4. 0.66 liter or 658 cc uh, we've got our rocker cover our four spark plugs plug leads our distributor our ignition coil is here the entire exhaust system is here exhaust manifold down here into a flex pipe and muffler here <laughs> it's funny that the muffler assembly and exhaust assembly is uh, bigger than the actual engine itself we've got our intake manifold runners up here we got our PCV hose here, although it's not, uh, it does not have a PCV valve. I don't believe, I think it's, uh, they call it a blow-by tube in Japan. Uh, their emissions are different than US. Uh, this is our backup beeper. Yes, it does have a backup beeper like a dump truck or a large piece of equipment because these are ruled commercial vehicles in Japan. So when I put this thing in reverse, it does go beep, beep, beep when I'm backing up. Uh, our side engine mount here, I noticed this uh, initially inspecting it. Uh, before buying it, it is separating uh, here, so we do need a side engine mount. As you see here, we've got oil dripping uh, down the frame. It's also coming down the timing cover. Uh, I suspect part of it is this leaking rocker cover gasket. It does need a rocker cover gasket, evident all the way across some oil. Uh, I'm not sure if it is a leaking cam or crank seal, perhaps, leaking at the bottom of this timing cover, but once we get the timing cover off, uh, we're going to do a time belt and water pump on this as well. Uh, we're basically going to do a full tune up and get all the maintenance to square one. That way I can keep track of it because I don't have any maintenance records. I don't know when the time belt, water pump, or any other service has been performed on this vehicle. Uh, our accessory belt, which only turns an alternator because this is not an AC equipped vehicle. It is looking kind of frayed on the sides. It is not a serpentine belt. Uh, it is a V belt, older V belt, and it just tensions off of the alternator. Um, the alternator is an original Subaru unit. It's not got a reman or aftermarket on it. Um, our starter is back here. Hilarity, the size of the starter compared to the engine. Our transmission is back behind here. Uh, we'll jump up top to the upper hood, which is basically a panel you remove in the truck bed itself to access the top of the engine. Come over here to the side. Here is our alternator, which basically would fit in the palm of my hand. Cute and tiny. And we can get a better look at that alternator belt. Going to try to get the cannon up here. I'm just on the GoPro right now, just because of how compact it is. It's a lot easier to get it in here. Uh, we do have a nipple here without a hose on it. I'm not sure if that's for an uh, accessory this vehicle is not equipped with. Uh, we do have a dirt dauber nest here. I've already removed one from the intake manifold. Get that out of the way. Here's the cradle for where the AC compressor would sit had this been equipped with air conditioning. Uh, we can see some dirt to build up on uh, some dried engine oil here. Again, from that leaking rocker cover. Our T-tiny little intake manifold and our carburetor. Yes, unfortunately, uh, you had a carbureted, naturally aspirated, or a fuel-injected supercharged. Uh, Really wish I had the fuel injection supercharged, uh, but we do have a carburetor, so I am running non-ethanol gasoline in this just to prevent any issues with the carburetor uh, because I'm not sure how easy it would be to get a carb rebuild kit for this carb. Uh, I've seen on many of the online mini truck parts distributors, they do have some rebuild kits, but I'm not sure how um, complete it is, if it's just seals or if you can get the float and needle and all that. I'm not exactly sure 
what style carburetor it has on it either. Haven't looked into that too much. Uh, I believe this here is our engine coolant temp sensor. We got a little bit of crust here around these uh, heater hoses. Uh, so I believe this is actually our temp sensor for uh, the temperature gauge. This larger sensor here is probably our regular uh, engine coolant temp sensor is much larger and it's right near the main uh, radiator hose neck. And we've got a vacuum canister here, a few vacuum lines to it. All the vacuum lines appear to be in decent shape. They're not cracking or anything, but some are getting kind of hard. Uh, so we'll probably need to go through and replace the majority of these vacuum lines. Um, other than that, nothing's really jumping out at me. This is one of the uh, coolant lines that has a cap on it. When you refill the system, uh, you have to come back here and open this up and bleed air here. There's also a cap near the heater core and the cab to bleed air. And I believe there's another one under the chassis somewhere. There's several places you have to bleed the cooling system when refilling it because the radiator, as you saw earlier, is mounted underneath the cab and engine is rear mounted. So we do have coolant tubes running the length of the chassis. So there's plenty of places for air to get trapped when refilling the cooling system. So just something to be aware of. Uh, here's our air box. I believe the previous owner said he already put a new air filter in it, but I will be checking it just because. Uh, here we can see our shift cable coming through. Here we see the shift cable. Uh, this is a rod shifted transmission, uh, cable shifted transmission in the mean. Uh, maybe you can see through there, I'm not sure. It's pretty tiny on the GoPro. That's our reverse, uh, probably our reverse switch. This does not have a neutral safety switch or a clutch switch. As long as it's in neutral, uh, you can just start it. You don't have to press the uh, clutch pedal down for good or for bad. Uh, for bad, yesterday I accidentally had it in first gear and the little truck wanted to take off on me, but I caught the mistake very quickly. Here is our itsy bitsy little distributor cap. We will be getting a new cap and rotor for a full electrical tune-up as well as new plug wires and plugs. All of our wires seem to be doing okay. Don't see any cracks or anything, but they are old. Good enough to replace. I'm not seeing any leaks really top side or anything noteworthy that would uh, be worrisome. Let's see if we can get this air box open really quick just to have a look see at this air filter not sure how accessible it is okay there we go yes we do have a nice clean newer elf newer air filter in here so i don't think we'll have to worry about that i believe there's a brand new air filter as well included behind the passenger seat I do need to give this little engine bay a cleaning, give it a little bath. Quite dusty. Underneath now, and see if we can find any issues there. Um, here's something noteworthy as well. We've got a pyrometer or a exhaust uh, temperature gauge. Not exactly sure why this has it. It's normally something you see on a diesel engine uh, but there is an exhaust over temperature um, warning light in the instrument cluster. Not exactly sure why. Need to dig more into the factory service manual and owner's manual and try to translate the Japanese into engine on that. Uh, Japanese into English, not into engine. Uh, more oil back here from the leaking rocker cover. I believe we may have a leaking distributor O-ring seal. Uh, we'll probably go ahead and pull the distributor and replace that o-ring seal as well uh, Just to be on the safe side. Uh, it's probably leaking just the same and it's cheap and easy to get to So again tires are pretty warm. That does not really matter because we do have that set of Tanabis uh, Scheduled according to UPS to be delivered tomorrow to me as well as my new tires I believe our rear shocks are blown. We've got a little bit of liquid there so these shocks are insanely tiny. They're barely wider than the width of my thumb. Uh, so we'll probably put new rear shocks on it. Let's go ahead and shut the hood so it won't be falling down on me while I slide under here. We got some cracks in the exhaust heat shields. Uh, nothing really to worry about. 
Got some rust on the fasteners, which would be typical for a 26 year old vehicle. Uh, right away, we have a leaking axle seal on the passenger side or left side of the vehicle. It is a seepage leak, it's not dripping um, here. Let's see, this is our clutch cable. We do have some wear and we have a rather tired boot here and here and part of the plastic coating on our clutch cable is wearing away and we can see the metal braided clutch cable. So more than likely we need to go ahead and order a clutch cable. Uh, see other than that, pretty dry under here. I assume that is our gear oil drain for the transmission. Uh, our rear CV axle boot intact, not torn, inner and outer on the uh, passenger side. Uh, trailing arm bushing looks okay. We'll get the pry bar out and check for movement in that. There is our fuel filter. We definitely want to get one of those and replace it just because we don't know the age. I believe that there will be our fill plug for the rear uh, transmission slash differential or transaxle. Uh, we'll check these bushings with the pry bar. Uh, we don't seem to have any leakage from the pinion there to the prop shaft to the front differential. Uh, we have a little bit of seepage here on our oil pan. There's our oil drain plug. There is our driver side CV axle. Again, no tears on the CV axle boots. We have a disgusting Fram oil filter that needs to be thrown in the garbage and replaced immediately with a Subaru genuine one. I found out that Subaru's, um, the Justy, Subaru Justy oil filter is the exact same as the one for the sandbar and both are mo made in Japan. They are black Tokyo Roki filters, so we can get those from a US Subaru dealer. So we'll replace that and change the oil. Although the owner said he recently changed the oil, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and do it just so we know when it was done exactly. Um, this here, I believe we have a rear main seal leak on this engine. So at some point we'll have to uh, pull the engine, pull the transmission or pull the assembly. As I see online, it pretty much drops out together and then separate the two, put a rear main seal in it. Um, probably at the same time, put a clutch in it just because whether it really needs a clutch or not, if we're going through all the trouble to pull that out and do a rear main, we'll go ahead and put a new clutch kit in it. Uh, so we won't have to worry about pulling that apart and doing that service later. So here's our better shot at this uh, separating engine mount. You can see where the rubber and the metal part of the mount are separating. Uh, here is a sticker. I don't know if you can make that out. I believe it says uh, 10,000 kilometers. Well guys, real quick for you, we had a question on that. Here is our answer. Thank you, Google Translate. Timing belt replacement, every 100,000 kilometers. We're at 77,000 and some change now. So uh, we're off of that, but given this is a 94 model, we're gonna go ahead and do one just uh, a little early. I'm not sure it says 10, then there's some Japanese symbol and then KM for kilometers. So I'm not sure if that's 10,000 kilometers for a timing belt seems quite uh, a small interval, or if that is perhaps 100 and, 100 and something kilometers for a time and belt, I'm not sure. Uh, but you can get a better look there at this oil leak. Again, I'm sure that a lot of that is running off of this corner of this rocker cover right here, because it is wet and it's right in that vicinity. Um, but some of this is probably blowing from the front back, so maybe a leaking crankshaft seal. Our shock absorber on the driver's side has a little bit of leakage as well, so we definitely do need a set of rear shocks. Again, no issues with our CV axle boots. Here is our oil pressure switch for our oil pressure light. Again, we got some leakage here that might be part of this oil filter array. I'm not sure if the oil pump is mounted. That might be the oil pump. Yes, it's probably the oil pump because it's right under the crankshaft pulley. I'm not exactly sure if this is like a regular Subaru engine uh, where 
the oil pump is right on the end of the crankshaft of the crank pulley. Uh, but if you can see right there, that's our crankshaft pulley. And we do have some oil right there at the crankshaft pulley and the timing cover. So I assume we've got a leaking crank seal. All this stuff is pretty minor for cost and for replacement. Um, this side of the transmission, we do have some moisture there, some gear oil on the end of the CV axle, but we don't have any drip or anything running. So it's just starting to seep. So we will need both axle seals for the transmission, but the front differential, we only needed one uh, and we need to address wherever that leak's coming from. As I said before, uh, they service the front differential. So maybe they didn't put a new crush washer on the filter, the drain plug, or didn't tighten it thoroughly and it's leaking slightly going down the road. Here's a better look at all that oil there on the plate here between the engine and transmission. So suspect rear main seal leakage and uh, this staining of oil on the back of the engine block, I would assume is from a leaking uh, oil pan here and being blown back going down the road onto the block. So, you know, nothing major, just some little bit of oil leakage, uh, clutch cable, fuel filter. Uh, this mount here seems to still be in pretty good shape. Uh, our rear shocks, uh, rear springs look okay. They do have some rust on them. Uh, we need to check the rear drum brakes. I don't know if I'm gonna pull off the wheels and pull the drums in this video to check them but our fronts were basically brand new as we saw earlier. Other than that, underneath here, not seeing anything jumping out at me bad. We don't have very much rust at all other than that front cross member. Uh, we have some surface rust and the surface rust on those uh, heat pipes there, the three there coming down the center of the chassis, nothing really major on the frame rails. Our fuel tank over there looking really good and our spare tire there and our air deflector there in front of the engine. Real quick, took the rear wheel off. I'm not gonna pull the drum right now because I believe it's a captive drum where you have to pull the axle nut here. I believe it's part of a wheel bearing spindle drum assembly combo. I haven't looked through the service menu yet, but I've been watching some uh, Japanese YouTube videos on auto repair and I believe I saw on most of these mini trucks that it is a, um, like an old pickup truck front end where it's basically a spindle here and then your wheel bearing and um, drum uh, go on there and are held by this one nut with the CV axle. So here's a little bit better view of that leaking rear shock absorber that we're going to be replacing. Um, here is our speedometer cable. We've got a couple of switches here. Not exactly sure what they do. I believe the one on top, as I said earlier, is for the reverse lights. Uh, we don't have a neutral safety switch. So maybe this is something to do with the four wheel drive system. Not sure. I have to study up on that in the service manual. Uh, again, as I said before, here is our fuel filter. Uh, probably going to go ahead and replace that just because. And right above that, let me get my flashlight out. It's getting dark out here. Uh, that is our fuel pump for the carbureted vehicle. They have a very low pressure fuel pump just to transfer the fuel from the tank, push it through the filter, and push it up to fill the bowl on the carburetor. So really low pressure. It's not like a fuel injector system where you got 50, 60 PSI fuel pressure. Uh, other than that, Here's our battery. Uh, this one is missing the battery box cover. I found them on Subaru, um, Subaru, on Amazon Japan. I think they're like $22 for a Subaru Genuine. Unfortunately, the seller on Amazon Japan does not ship to the US, so I'm gonna have to look for that elsewhere. Uh, this battery is quite old looking. I don't know how good a condition it is. It's a uh, not a sealed battery, of course, being a small battery like this, we do have our area to add our acid and our water. Uh, we do have lots of little crusties on our battery cable ends. We need to remove those, clean those, check our cables. Here's some of the main fuses. Haven't really looked for a fuse box in the vehicle yet. Not sure where I would find that. Need to look for that. And then there is our sending unit with our uh, electronics for our fuel level gauge and back there in the dark as our spare tire. So guys, that basically does it. We've gone over this thing front to back, very minimal issues, uh, you know, stuff we can easily repair and we are gonna repair it in future videos. So there's gonna be lots of DIY step-by-step uh, -step videos. So you guys can fix your 26 year old Subaru sandbars because I know some of you viewers have them. Just a joke, 
but I know that a lot of you guys like to watch the repair videos. Uh, whether it's something you're doing or not, it's something that's enjoyable. I know myself, I like to get on YouTube and watch repair videos as well, just for the heck of it. So with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next video.